Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'd like to talk about the Matsuko switch box. I recently purchased a skimmer and some garden pond lights and I found myself adding more and more plugs into a plastic semi weatherproof box with extension leads. It started to become unsightly with more and more plugs and more and more wires taped up and cable ties holding it all back together. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that I had to change this because it was uh, you know, not sustainable through the winter months with water getting into the boxes and just the volumes of plugs that when you need to isolate one unit like unplug a skimmer or turn your pump off, you were searching through six, seven plugs to try and which, to work out which one was what. So I looked for different solutions to this and ultimately a switch box was the, the final sort of thing I, I came across. Blagdon's do a switch box, uh, five or six uh, sw yeah, switches on it and there's some other versions of it, remote versions. And Anyway, I came across the Masuko uh, switch box. I didn't really know much about it, there wasn't many YouTube videos about it, so I took a bit of a gamble and did my own research and eventually come to the conclusion that there was three different types they sell and chose the, the one I'm going to review now. And here it is. As you can see, once installed, it's a far neater solution than having several plugs and extensions in a box or some sort of unit to, to keep it all dry. Six cables running into the bottom, as you can see. Uh, the one on the right hand side, the slightly thicker cable, is your main armoured cable. It doesn't have to be armoured, um, but obviously I've got armour cable running down to my pond. So that's my armoured cable going in. From there you have further five wires running out to different items such as UV lights, skimmers and pumps. On the box itself you can see six, uh, sorry, five main buttons. These buttons actually control what you're actually each individual item. The button up here, if you switch that on, you see the panel actually light up. You can then control each individual item, as it says in the top line, pump one. For me to turn the pump on and off, it's a simple press of the button and the pump will go off. My main pump is now off. There's three different versions of this box. There is a non-timered version, so you can't set any timers. It's purely all you've got is the switches. The LCD lights display in the middle, this, this, this display, uh, it doesn't have that, it's just blanked off. So all you have is the option to turn on and off your items individually. This version is uh, slightly more expensive, but it's a switched timer box and you can individually turn on and off your items up to five times a day by pre-programming the, the timer. Uh, when you do your initial setup it will ask you to install the date and time and from there the timer just continues to run all day and all night. So stuff like pumps and stuff like that, if you decide you want them turned off at night, UV lights maybe, but then you want your pond lights on, you can have them timed. As I say, each individual item, say like the lights for instance on circuit 5 as you can see, you can have those come on and off up to five times a day. I don't know why you'd want that facility, but this box does have that facility. By simply pressing on the main square button and then scrolling down to lights and then the zero, as you can see there, my times for my lights, I've got them programmed to come on twice a day. The first time they're going to come on is at 5.30 in the morning until 7 o'clock. And then, and then they'll go off at 7 o'clock during the day. And in the evening, they come back on about 7.30 in the evening until 2300 hours. And as I say, you can individually have that come on and off. There's three more available slots there where you can have them on and off. I don't know what items on a pond you'd want to have coming on and off during the day, um, but the facility's there. As you can see, I've just turned the pump back on, and a few seconds time, you can hear the pump kicking in, and then the pump will off it go again. To install the box, it's relatively simple. Can a little bit fiddly at times. Uh, just underneath 
underneath the panel you st stick a, a screwdriver uh, in into the slot underneath and slide to the left and it will release the front panel I've already released it just for, for ease for showing you now the panel itself has got these uh, basically little uh, brackets where you fit the uh, wires into and then you screw them in live neutral and earth into each individual circuit and you've got five circuits the sixth one as I say is your main power feed in these screws were a little bit fiddly to get in and out of and get the wires in. I'm quite confident the stuff's sort of like this, but I did find it exceptionally difficult. I believe they've superseded this box already with a, a version that has like a push-in fit connections on, your, on the wires and then a little button to release them as opposed to screws. Let me just go further in on that so you can see that. But yeah, this, this particular version... I, it didn't seem to give me an option. I don't think the, the, the change of the later version has made any difference to the software or any other functionality on it. It's purely just the, I think they've taken feedback from people installing it with these little screws that they are a little bit fiddly. There's a rubber seal around this uh, box and it's meant to be waterproof, IP56 rated. Uh, the other night we had a quite a heavy storm since I've had it installed. We've had a, f a few nights where we've had uh, rain, but we did have one quite heavy storm the other night, and it doesn't seem to have had any adverse effect on it. Only time will tell. Um, it's literally to, to shut it again, you don't need to insert the screwdriver. You just literally push it shut, and it snaps shut, and it, stay, it will stay shut. There is a, a third version of this. I, I mentioned the first version without the timer function and this is the timer function. There is a third version which is actually a little bit more expensive still uh, and that has the ability on the circuit one to monitor the pump's uh, performance. And basically uh, the, the only way I've sort of read about it and the only way I can see that that does that is by measuring the ampage that the pump is using. For instance, if one of the pump pipes that comes up to a waterfall or something like that splits hence the, the, the pump won't have to work that hard just to pump water off onto your garden uh, and the, the ampage of the pump will drop this unit will monitor that ultimately sending off an alarm and potentially stopping that circuit from operating so it doesn't empty your pond water out onto your garden or if you have a filter split or something like that um, potentially good 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 idea good to have um, however I didn't feel it was necessary totally for me to have June the, my actual pump is slightly raised up from the bottom of my uh, pond it's about a foot up so in the event if I did have a pipe failure or the pump was to for some reason be able to pump water out onto the garden rather than through the filters and returning then my pond would drop to probably about a foot in depth and then the pump will be above the water line this would save my fish because the pump, the, pump, the fish would sit at the bottom in that foot of water until I returned home and realised what had happened. Um, so that's, that's well, not a critical thing, but obviously for some people that have their pumps fitted to the bottom or the low, very low down in the pond, that might be, it might be a good idea. Other than that, it's um, pretty neat as you can see. Uh, I recommend it at this point. Give me six months and I'll see, but it from just from purely from how neat it is compared to where I was at before with wires and, and extensions uh, this yeah this is much neater solution